Thanks very much indeed. And first of all, just, just to, to, to welcome what you're doing here, because I think uh, you know, government may play a significant role, indeed must play a significant role, but this issue is not going to be solved by government alone. And I think that's something that's really important message that needs to go out. Um, the truth is that you know, the decisions we make now are going to determine uh, the future of, of, of this continent, this globe, for, the, for a century ahead. And it is really important that we take that extremely seriously. The truth is also that the crash has concealed our nakedness. We have not been adjusting the way we should have to the challenge of climate at any level. And it's only the recovery that has revealed, as the, the, the stats have shown, that we are far off course now. Our target to reduce uh, carbon emissions by 30% uh, by 2030, which is a, a compelling target, because if we fail, we have to pay for the gap. Uh, we are way off course. We're moving in the wrong direction, and it requires massive change. Equally, as I've pointed out, I'm absolutely convinced that we have a choice. We can be a leader or we can be a follower. And if we choose to be a follower, we will face long-term much higher costs of adjustment, uh, but we will also have missed the opportunities that adjusting early, being the, an early mover, can create for the, those who lead such a change. So it's, it's vital that we make a massive step up in, in our ambition. It's equally, I think, important to say that government must have a strategy for this. And I, I share many of the uh, views expressed here. We need to nail down a very clear uh, roadmap as to the direction we're traveling. The first national mitigation plan, by its own admission, was not a roadmap. It set out the, the terrain we had to uh, cross. We now need that detailed roadmap. And that is going to require all of government, and I, I, I've committed that we will create an all of government strategy to, to, work, to, to, to deliver that. And I believe also government can play a huge role itself in leading by example, in changing some of the regulatory uh, provisions that hold, hold back opportunities uh, by, by, by creating the infrastructures and facilities that can make, make things happen, and as others said, by incentivizing. But I don't think we should fool ourselves into thinking that government can incentivize the sort of change that's necessary. Just take housing, for example. There is an investment of 50 billion needed in our housing uh, stock if we are to achieve our, our, our ambitions. Government can set aside a little over 3 billion over the next 10 years to incentivize. There is a massive gap to be made up. Uh, and as you know, a lot of the investment that has to be made is now very chunky. After you insulate your attic and do a little bit of other things, you know, the next step up is very significant cost. You're talking about you know, 30, 40, 50,000 investment in a house. So we have a real issue as to, and those of you who are bankers and financiers, will have to turn your mind that if we are going to recognize that this, uh, and we're going to take leadership role in this, we are going to have to come up with ways in which uh, people who are homeowners can uh, embrace such an investment, which has a huge long-term return, but of course its short-term payback period, which I, I suppose many of you would look to, is not going to be uh, what, what, what you, 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 you want. Government, too, is doing something, and I know just having heard IBM, IBM have been for a long, long time researching smart cities uh, in this, in this, uh, out in their, their, their place in Blanchardstown. Government is pledging that under Project 40, 2040, we will be creating smart cities with Limerick, Waterford, Galway, uh, and Cork growing at twice the rate of Dublin, and that we are going to grow compact, connected, sustainable, regional balance. That is a massive statement of, of ambition. And to make that happen will require a lot of decisions at all levels to underpin that, to plan and deliver uh, what, what is a different way of, of, of living. And it's something that you know, is a big challenge that government is up for uh, and will require a lot of people uh, to, 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 to cooperate with. Equally, uh, I'm an economist and you can imagine price does matter. When you're making decisions, big chunky investment decisions that have a long-term uh, return for the globe, but if, as economists would talk about, the price is external to the decision you make. You don't pay the cost that you add by your smoky coal or your, your, your inefficient buildings. Well, then you're often, you can be the free rider. You can just glide along and do nothing. 
Uh, so there will have to be issues about a trajectory for carbon price, but the price of, uh, of the impact that this is having. And that will have implications for business as we move to that. And you, your businesses have to recognize that if we want to be efficient users of resources, and that's what your shareholders demand, equally the, your society demands that your efficient uses of the the resources for which you know, the price is not always paid up front. And that's something that, that I, I suppose we, 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 have to, we have to grapple with. Innovation, I suppose, is taking technology and ap ap applying it. And, and government recognizes that it's not going to be all cured at government level. Uh, and we've explicitly put out in the National Development Plan four billion in funds in, in terms of urban development, rural development, climate action, disruptive technologies, set aside four billion to allow enterprise and communities and others to come together to be the catalyst for the sort of change we need. That will require leadership, and much of the leadership will have to come from people who have access to the technologies, to the, to the business, uh, to the business uh, experience that, that, that they have. I think a number of the speakers also touched upon, you know, the, this isn't just about economics. It goes well beyond economics because of the deep free rider problem. This is about people today making decisions that are for the benefit of people tomorrow. And we're not always that good at that. Particularly, we haven't been that great at it in Ireland uh, in making decisions with the next generation in mind. And it does, therefore, require a different type of, of, of leadership uh, because this will require as I say, deep-seated change in the way we behave. It will require big, chunky investments. It will require overlooking that you can be a free rider and get away with it. Uh, it will require redesigning significant elements of our business with detailed and specialist challenges, uh, ch strategies to, 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 deli to, to deliver them. Now, I'm a huge optimist because when I look back, uh, and I was in jobs uh, when we were at the, on our knees in 2011, and I was absolutely convinced then that Irish enterprise and Irish workers would face up to the challenge and overcome it. And at the time it seemed so daunting. All the markets were closing, they were all in decline, Europe was in recession, government was cutting, taxes were rising, and yes, we enterprise and people in this room stepped up to the plate. We won new markets, we introduced new technologies, we made our businesses leaner, and we delivered, and we now not, not the 100,000 jobs, but we have 400,000 jobs delivered. We will have to try and create the same sort of momentum, but I, I, I think climate is less easy to communicate as the challenge than you know, jobs, because about jobs was you know, people's lives were creating a business, collapsing, people's children emigrating, people understood that. So we have a big challenge to, to, to uh, incentivize change. And I think, you know, when, when corporate leaders are going to have to take a very significant role outside of what you might normally regard as business as usual, or our corporate social responsibility as a sort of a sideline activity, this is going to be mainstream if it's to, be work, to, to work. You have to lead by example. You have to look at your own organization and see what barriers can I remove that would change the way people think about these things in their own lives. What incentives can my business create for those I employ or those I work, I work with, our suppliers, our customers, uh, that could change the way they, they behave? And it will require committing your hard-earned money and your best talent to address some of these issues within your business. So it is a big ask uh, that people, you know, if we want to confront this, it is a big ask for, for all of us. And there are very knotty problems that you know as well as I do. Really knotty problems in, in freight and, and transport, for example, where even with our, 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 our projections and for our electric vehicles and so on, we are projecting that transport will not be reducing by 30%, but increasing by 16%, uh, its use of, of carbon. That is a, the scale of that challenge you know, needs to be thought about by people who, 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 who commit. There are also, of course, as we regard, there are conflicts of interest here that have to be managed. We have seen conflicts around wind, around peat, around pylons, and the number will, uh, will, will multiply. We have to build coalitions for supporting some of the change that's necessary. It can't, as, as, as someone said, be just left to the politicians uh, to manage and develop that, that, that type of, of consensus. We need to, to think differently about 
funding these things. So there's going to be deep-seated thinking about you know, green funding uh, and how that works and how we manage the lower uh, rates of return over a longer period uh, and get, make them uh, accessible. And we need to incentivize behavior. And, but, but I think, you know, as, 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 as I think it was um, Laura said, you know, a lot of the stuff is out there that we know about, like where we choose to live. There's a factor of one in three as to whether we live in compact urban communities or live out in the countryside. One in three in our carbon use. You know, what, what sort of vehicles we choose to purchase. Again, it's a, a, a almost one, one in three uh, range, depending on what, what we choose. Whether we travel by plane or travel uh, by car, a factor again of nearly one, one to three in the choice, choice we make. The sort of heating systems we put in, a factor of one to three in the sort of heating systems we put in. What we eat, a factor of one to 23 in the choices we make as to what, what we eat. You know, there are huge issues. Uh, that affect every one of us in our intimate lives that you know, we need to think about. That's not to say we, everyone moves to one end of the spectrum or the other, but these are the sort of issues that we have to think about and change uh, within, uh, uh, have a managed change, identifying the least cost adjustments uh, and manage and deliver those. So it is, uh, it is a very daunting uh, business, or I suppose, challenge to, 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 to take on. Uh, but I'm really enthused by the fact that we have the support of business because in, in other areas of my, my responsibility, for example, plastic packaging. We use 80% more plastic packaging than uh, the rest of Europe. Some way we have to find a way together to, to, to uh, cut down on that and incentivize people to, to use different ways, convenient at all uh, as it, it may be. Businesses, uh, the BER ratings of business, they average three. Uh, average middle point, a C. Uh, however, there's 11% of businesses who are at G. That means they're using 11 times the amount of energy and carbon emissions. Uh, there's a 6% at F, which means they're using nine times the level of carbon efficiency of the most efficient. Uh, at E, there's 11%, seven times as much carbon emissions as the most efficient. You know, so there are, are real challenges here that we need to think about in, in a, a very deep way. And you know, you may be you know, throwing all this out. I, I, is, um, I'm sharing my, my challenges with you because uh, I don't want people to go away and say, you know, this is all about government putting together a plan and only if they'd set, have the ambition and, and, and go and do it, uh, we'd all be, 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 you know, hitting our targets and everything in the garden would be rosy. You know, these are fundamental changes in the way we need to behave uh, if we want to get there. And we certainly in government won't be able to do it, uh, our politics won't be able to do it, unless A, it can create some level of political consensus, but B, much more importantly, some level of social consensus led by people of influence like yourselves, by your example and by what you do. Uh, that's the way we will crack it. Uh, but crack it, it must be. Uh, and that's the, the other important message. We cannot, uh, we cannot allow this uh, as a challenge that we face to drift as we have have, perhaps understandably in the crash, it was at the back of our minds, everything else was about survival. But we're no longer in that survival mode and the challenge is, is there for, to, for us to take up. So I really look for, uh, thank you for the invitation to be a part of, of people stepping up to take responsibility. And I hope that um, you know, we, we can, as I've been able to count on enterprise in my previous jobs, uh, be able to count on you in, in this major challenge. Thanks very much.